Hello everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from sound for mo it's Leo speaking. Today I have the pleasure to show you Magic Delay from Gustav or the company GSDSP. Um, it's a really nice uh, delay, it's really magic and I will show you why in a moment. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. As you can see, I'm inside a UM, I have an audio channel and I have selected purposely a piano to see how magically we can change this, the sound of that piano. As you know, it's just a traditional piano, the grand piano AUV3 version 2. Sounds like that. I have now loaded and activated the magic delay. And by the default, it sounds as you hear at the moment. So this is the interface, nice and simple. Of course, you can scroll up and down, depending on what you have available as space. So let's start from the very top. You have four different lanes, and I'll explain how these work in a moment. The first one is activated, clicking on it, and you can see this pink line. The principle of uh, the main principle on which it works is that it can change the type of delay based on frequency. So in this case, horizontally, you move a frequency, as you can see in this uh, um, screen that moves up here on the top left. And then as you move up and down, it will change, it will change from regular 30 second, uh, regular uh, 64th, etc. It change the type of delay in terms of time. And if you want more subdivision here, you click on this simple, and so you can add a triplet and dotted line as well. You can see more vertical lines. Okay, so um, if you click and hold and drag, you can highlight an area and you see two uh, additional dots. If you move closer to one, click um, hold and drag, and you can move up, which means that from this frequency to this frequency, it will use a regular eighth. As it moves up here, it will use regular half, and then when it gets here, it will move down to regular eighth. So you can create interesting sound. Now, you have a drive wet effect here, and you can also lock it as you change presets, which you can do um, up here. I will show you that in, uh, later on. So if we want uh, a maximum wet effect, Of course, you can also reset this waveform. Click here, and you have additional option where you can copy, for example, waveform from a different lane using these three symbols, right? And you check the color. You can reset it like so. You can invert this line, and you can randomize that line as well, like so, but you keep clicking on it, okay? Now, let's uh, um, reset it like so, and let's create again uh, some changes like so. Now, the reason that um, um, we can hear the first lane is because here, because here we have a, on the top right side an XY pad, and you can change the position from one lane to the other, and as you do that, it will show you on the middle of the screen the morphing between one lane to the, to the next. So by default, it is uh, set to show the pink line. As you can see, I moved now to the second lane where you have a normal delay. And indeed, if I activate that and I, if I scroll it down, at the very bottom it will say dry. In that case, I would not hear anything because clicking here on, on the keyboard because I have the dry wet effect set, set to wet as maximum. Okay, so let's move this up. And let's define something else, like so. Let's create some more changes in the other lanes, like so. And then let's go to the green one, the last one, and I want to show you something. Let's alight something like that and change it. As you can see, as you move up and down, it always changes vertically, but you cannot move the different points. You can move them like so, but it will not move them freely. It moves them always perpendicularly. And that is because you have this setting on. So if you disable it, then you can change the point as you like, which is much nicer. 
course, you need to have set here on the X, Y pad to here only that green line. So the beauty is that you can move the, the position on the X, Y pad somewhere in the middle, and there will be the move of all the different lanes. You can change here the amount of it back. You can also change the type of feedback from a traditional one, which is done in percentage, to an absolute one, which will affect the feedback based on the lay time. Um, I definitely prefer the second one. You can you have an high filter, high pass filter, and low pass filter as well. Here you can send the feedback to from the left to the right channel and vice versa, almost like a ping pong effect with this function. This icon here allows you to cut the feedback immediately, which is very useful when you have too much feedback. Of course, there are some times where you want to go into not recommended uh, feedback level and you activate that um, with this uh, uh, symbol here, this icon here. Okay. <laughs> You have, you can uh, um, decide the amount of output here, changing this uh, level here. You can enable zero latency there, okay. You can decide to change the amount of input sound or input source or signal. Double click, of course, to go back to the default settings. Here, down, down here, you have the type of algorithm is used uh, to change, uh, to create ultimately the sound. So you can go from more percussive to a more instrument one. And if you have uh, uh, headphones on, you can hear uh, certainly the difference. I leave it now set up for instrument. Down here in this section, you can invert um, the waveform. So let's um, show you the top one, the pink one. You can see that I can invert it like so. I can shift them left and right. I can skew it right and left. I can reset, of course. And then these buttons here allows you to create an offset to the right channel for the corresponding function for the inversion, shift and skew. That's the position here in the middle, so I have a morphing between all the different lanes. Okay, so let's uh, um, continue uh, exploring Magic Delay. Down here you have the modulation uh, section. Yeah, you can decide if to skip, like in this case, or to enable different mod modulation, and you have up to eight. When you want to activate one, click on one like so, and you can see the, uh, the on symbol which has come on here. Now, we have an LFO set up here as a modulator, but you can change that to random, custom LFO, amp follower. There is really, really a lot that you can choose from. And I would like to dedicate a full tutorial to show you all of those. In this case, the LFO has um, setting like uh, speed here, which can be in sync to the OS tempo, or you can have it as simple hertz, which is nice and easy to use. Of course, when it's, it's in sync, you can decide the type and subdivision as well, and the subdivision go from four bars to 64 division. But I like to set it to hertz, it's easier to control. But of course, it really depends on uh, on what you are doing. You might want to have it sync to bits per minute. On the right side, you have the selection of the waveform, sine, triangle, etc. You can adjust the phase, and also you can skew the phase as well. You have the amount here, and you can skew the amount as well. So um, when you are ready, you can decide the destination. Click on here. And then you decide, for example, that you want to click on here and you want the LFO to affect the shift and you can decide uh, to have positive value or negative value in the amount as well. OK. 
Okay, increase the speed. Increase the feedback. Here you have a global setting for modulation, which of course you can change and that allows you to get those additional fine uh, details. Of course out, you can decide to have a unipolar or bipolar here with this function. You can do a sample hold of the current function that you can see at the top for the LFO. You can reset it and turn it on and off. Of course, you can have additional modulator. You can click on the next one. Let's say that we do an amp follower now. You can do sign chain A, B, and output, but I will create some specific tutorial on those. Change the attack and the release, of course. But the other great thing you can do is that you can uh, designed to have a modulator and as destination you can choose the X and Y pad here. And therefore you can see the changes here between the different lines or you can, uh, sorry, lanes, so you can automate between different lanes. Really nice. Okay, and um, just to conclude, up here you have access to a main menu to manage import and export of preset. You can change the skin color, the language, really nice. Tool tips if you want it enabled or not. Then here you have a context help, which is really nice. If you don't remember something, just click on a control and it tells you what it is. The patch which is active or not, you have two different patches. You can copy and paste here. here you can select um, different presets um, and then you can also edit them. You can create a new one, save the changes and do a redo. And then up here, you can decide to randomize. So for example, you can randomize a little, a little bit more medium randomization or a lot of randomization. And if you click on this symbol here, you can decide which uh, parameters are included in the randomization or not. Let's go through some internal preset. As you can hear, it doesn't sound the piano. It doesn't sound like a piano at all. So you can really create some magic uh, um, sounds or output. And this is just using a normal um, piano. So you can imagine if you have a different type of input, what type of sounds you can create. So that is why it is really a magic delay. Okay, I'm going to stop here for this first tutorial. I hope you enjoyed and found it useful. And as always, see you next time. Bye.